welcome to Anne Marie's workshop. My name is Anne Marie and I love to make things. This is a Friday Sews video about what's been happening around my workshop for this week. If this is the kind of stuff you're into and you want to follow along with me on my sewing journey, then please like, subscribe, and share. So this week's topic is what is your fashion style? <laughs> well, I'd have to say my fashion style is authentically Anne-Marie. Um, I have been influenced by so many things, my aunts and my mother and the places I've lived. Um, I was born in England. Um, I've lived in uh, Toronto, New York, Houston, and finally here in Jamaica. And I've been influenced by so many things, but one thing I do know is I need to wear the things that work for me. Uh, even when I was very, very slim, I did not have an hourglass or the typical ideal as far as the fashion industry, like what they make. Uh, uh, I had never had that shape. Um, I have very little distance between my lower rib and my pelvis bone, so I don't really go in and out. I kind of go straight. So that always was a little frustrating, but it also helped inform my being a sewer. Um, I could make things that fit me properly in the colors I needed all by sewing. And like the first thing, the first button I sewed on my bed jacket at five years old, five years old took me on this journey. There are a few things I like. Everybody knows I like these glasses. <laughs> I've always liked glasses. I just didn't ever need them until my 40s. And um, the cost of um, glasses, I kind of expressed myself in sunglasses, but I didn't need them a whole lot. And then there were readers, which I developed in my late 40s needing. And now I'm still wearing readers. But I found a company, you see in my hall, I don't work for them. <laughs> it just seems like I do. And I got these wonderful glasses and I love celebrating an outfit with um, a new pair of um, eyeglasses. Now I do, I have pledged uh, not to buy any more until after December, uh, simply because I, I can't fit any more in my, um, glasses drawers. I have these shallow drawers in my dressing table and I, I'm not going to name the number of how many I have, but they do give me so much pleasure. Through my African heritage, I do love to bead. So I do make quite a bit of these bracelets and pair them with other jewelry. I do like statement pieces. Um, um, I love a dress. I love a dress. And um, um, I like color. So I've said before, I'm in the resort um, uh, stage of my life as far as wearing my clothes, but I've always liked color. Now, as a school teacher and a librarian, um, I did have um, a little less color, um, but I, I did love, I did still love a dress. Um, I, d I wore primarily uh, cocoa brown, navy and black and then i splashed all my shirts and things like that and then there's also church style now church style was an opportunity to dress up and wear something uh fabulous and i sang in the choir so i wore a choir robe the whole time anyway <laughs> but that didn't matter sunday i used to get dressed up i was i could not wait for the big hat wearing church lady uh, style, but alas, we haven't been able to go to church, uh, my father and I, for the past two years because of his health and the and the pandemic. But I do have quite a few hats, maybe about four or five, and I was looking to add to that collection because I waited my whole life to be one of those ladies with the big hats. Um, and I guess that kind of wraps up my style. Glasses, jewelry, oh, I forgot, earrings. We don't have enough time for that. <laughs> now, as for what's happening around the workshop this week, I had a few small um, projects, um, and this is one of them. 
This was a mistake on my part, and I'll explain. This is Marcy Tilton's 7474. Um, I don't know if it's still in the Vogue catalog, but I love this vest shape, and I thought I would wear it with long sleeve shirts and pants. I thought it was a wonderful um, um, thing, uh, school outfit. This is part of my monthly plans where I take something from um, the um, bucket I keep of projects I cut out before I left for Jamaica and before I retired that I didn't finish. So this is one I wanted to finish. Now, the thing about this pattern is they specifically tell you that this pattern is decided for, designed for a, a double-sided material like boiled wool, um, faux leather, so that one side would be leather and the other side would be suede. I completely ignored that. And I um, uh, sewed this lovely um, faux suede, uh, soft pink fabric. A and it would have been wonderful. But when you fold over this neckline, this neckline is a fold over, you get this satin look and the edges are unfinished. So um, this, in order to uh, make this work, it took quite a bit of finagling. I had to cut a double, I had already cut, I had already tried to fix it. Um, I guess when I made this, uh, when I cut this out, I had already tried to fix it. So I had cut out um, the front as well as another facing, a double, um, so that I could um, uh, sew it inside out and give it its give it its body that it needed for the neckline and everything. Oh, I had to think about this. It had all kinds of things. It had these triangular stitched um, pockets. It had um, uh, darts and snips and. It was a minute. I had to think about it. I had to. I couldn't sew it in a fast style. I had to figure it out little bit by little bit. I had to mark on the inside where the triangles are supposed to be. I had to, and even then, I wish I could have made this without having to top stitch because the top stitching lends an air to it. I don't particularly love, but I do love this giant button. <laughs> <laughs> I do love this giant button. And I finished it Marc Jacobs style with a snap on one side and no buttonhole on the other side. I would like so, some suggestions though, if you can put it in the comments. Because they thought that you would be making a leather or suede um, um, j uh, vest with exposed, the other side being up so exposed. The pocket was made with a slash like you stitch around the very edge and you make a slash, but this is not leather, it's not wool. And um, I don't think I like this raw thing with the with the, the thread exposed because this, this fabric, um, you know, does that. I wanna maybe cover it with something around the edge. I just know that this look, is not for me with a threadbare. It would have been so cool in a in the leather or in um, in a pleather or a, a real ultra suede, a real ultra suede, not this doe suede. And but there are some things I do love about it. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to wear it. I think it would be wonderful with black a black shirt underneath and black leggings and boots. I think this would be fire this button i've been waiting to use this button for such a long time it's beautiful the back is amazing it has such style the sides wrap around and you top stitch them they wrap around and then there is a insert in the back all right so all these things all these things i had to compensate for it was a little tricky but um Thankfully, I've, I've, I've had enough uh, uh, tricks up my sleeve to finish it. I think she's beautiful. Um, I'm just probably not gonna get any use from her living here in Jamaica. Now, the next thing I worked on this week, 
It took me several days because I only sew in the mornings before like nine o'clock is Simplicity 9476. I have been waiting to make this dress from when I first saw it in the spring catalog. Um, I did a sew along for it. Y'all, it's hella long. I'm sorry, I tried to speed up things and everything, but this lace overlay, it, it took a minute <laughs> to do this dress. So, um, but I love her. I love the color. I love how this uh, stretch crinkle lace, this is why this lace was on the $250 a yard Jamaican section, the clearance section. So that's about a dollar, dollar something, dollar 90 something. Dollar, I don't know the exchange rate right now. I, I could figure that out. But um, it was not just lace, it was stretch lace and it was crinkle. It was crinkle stretch lace. That is why that, um, that is why that material was on sale. Um, I don't know why the taffeta was on sale. It was just, it was just beautiful. So anyway, together and my loud lining, <laughs> my loud lining, um, actually, um, together, I don't know how, I can't, I don't think this dress cost over, um, $12. Uh, to make, as a matter of fact, the pattern cost me eleven dollars. So I'm, I'm thinking the pattern, um, because I couldn't, I, I missed the dollar ninety nine sale, um, and the fabric alone. Now this did not try me. I just had to go slow, and um, I'm gonna try it on. I put on a little bit of weight on vacation <laughs> in America. That was my fault. Hasn't have anything to do with anybody else. That was me with all those wonderful Mexican restaurants in Houston. So um, I'm going to try it. I, I did measure the waist for me and I did share in the um, in the sew along. Uh, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I had leftover lace. And I was anticipating using it for a shirt. I did not have leftover lace. That was the skirt. So I had cut a second waistband that was more, um, worked more for my body. <laughs> and then when I went to put the skirt together, I'm like, where's, where's all the skirts that I cut out? Y'all, this getting older is for the birds. But anyway, so I used double rather than triple because the skirt was substantial but it still worked out it's still the color is magnificent she was a lovely sew and I so enjoyed her I hope you get a chance to see the sew along it'll come out like next week Wednesday and um yeah that was one of the ones I did this week um in my um scrap section of what I sew every month I decided to finish this Pamela Patterns uh, camisole. Um, it, it has a lining and I had some leftover um, stretch knit that had these little kind of diamond uh, looks on them. And I thought that would be nice to line this. And so it kind of shows from below the, the pattern. And this is some leftover, like half a yard or how much of a yard of a melanated fabrics graphic print. I have made my daughter a jumper in it that she has worn to death. But this was leftover fabric. I find that I don't mind letting go of uh, things I make so much because I'll always make something with leftover fabric. I guess it is a win-win for me, but trying to be generous of spirit. So this is a little thing that I worked on in between uh, these projects. Also have these patterns. I'll have to look up what they are. Um, um, I think it's one of my standard, I keep about, uh, right now I have like about 10 patterns that I use all the time. I think I should, I should do a video on them because I'm sure you have something like-minded in your, in your um, sewing stash. 
I use them, I call them my um, hacking patterns, my scrap patterns, like when you have a little leftover after a project, they can make you something you can use. And so this black one is one of those and it has princess seams. I'm waiting, I'm just, the only thing left on it is to make the um, bias tape. I wanna use stretch. Um, so I'm going to have to make myself some black bias tape. Um, my local fabric store doesn't have any in knit. Um, and then this one I cut out. This was another scrap one. And I think it fulfills a so fruity uh, challenge um, because I was rolling my eyes like I didn't have anything that was so fruity. Like, like I wouldn't have some fruity clothes. Anyway, so that's one of the things that I'm we're almost finished. Now, as far as, far as my sew uh, sustainability, um, I made another bolster. It's a very simple pattern to do. And I have, uh, I think one of my mom's old nightgowns and some scraps and stuff like that. So I'm going to stuff it and then pull it closed and that'll make a nice neck bolster for anyone's bed. Um, this will be the base. And so then I can make a cover for it in any coordinating fabric you have for your bed. Uh, if you wanna put it in your car or something like that behind your head. So this, I finished this this week. Well, guys, that was it. And, but one of the wonderful things is today is the 24th, I believe. Um, I'm finished with my things that I said I was going to sew. And I've got another week left. So now I can sew the things that struck my fancy that I um, uh, uh, thought about like during the whole month. Because for me, my sewing is almost a meditation. And I think it might be the same for you. The reason that um, you're sewing, for me, the drone of the machine. I think about all kinds of things that I find interesting. I mull over personal issues. Um, I talk to people, I watch show shows, I listen to music. So sewing is very joyful for me. And so that's why I think that this hobby has never grown old. So while I'm sewing, sometimes I have an idea for or to put something together or, and so I usually pull those materials together, put them on my, my sofa of making over here. And if I have time at the end of the month, I go ahead and get after doing some of these joyful serendipitous sews, I guess I should call them serendipitous sews. So I know I do have like two fruity um, challenge things in there. I've got one more t-shirt challenge thing in the box, the stuff I threw in there. I've got these two dresses um, that I wanna make out of this dashiki fabric. So now I can sew those because I fulfilled the obligations that I made to myself, learning to honor myself. I finished those items, so I feel really, really good. Oh, and I have a little, a tiny haul. Hold on. All right, I told y'all about this Ping's fabric store <laughs> in Mandeville, Jamaica. I don't know why they have certain things, but every once in a while, well, what am I talking about? Every time I go in there, I find something. This is a brocade. It's a brocade. Now, I don't want this side. But this side, it's navy, light blue, and silver. This is my mothership. <laughs> so I think maybe it didn't sell because maybe people were looking at this side. But, but that's a lovely contrast. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this side here with the navy. I got four yards because... Grandma Ruby, rest in peace, four yards, is all you need to buy. <laughs> um, if you don't know what you're making something out of. I don't know what I'm making it with this brocade, but it's my mini haul. It, and it was my allowance because I thought I was going to be able to not buy anything to do with sewing uh, for 60 days. But I think it's just better that I uh, give myself a budget per month and stop when I when I've hit the budget and um 
because life is for living. And if you love fabric and you like to make stuff, then you should do that. And that's what I'm going to do. So that is what happened this week around the um, workshop. I love watching your uh, entries and what you did in the Friday Sews workshop. I feel like I'm sewing with friends. All right, keep making and we will see you next week.